Hey everybody, Mike Day here. So in today's video, we're pouring a concrete floor over an existing concrete floor. And if you're wondering if you can do that, that's probably why you clicked on the video. Well, yes, you can. You know, this, this floor was really bad. It was actually five inches out of level, just like I said right there. It's up and down. There was nothing really consistent about it. It was just poured that way years ago. It's a pretty old garage. Um, it it wasn't all cracked up it had one crack in it that looked like it was from a frost heave and the the rest of the floor wasn't really cracked it was just poured out of level <laughs> whoever did it in the first time probably didn't really know what they were doing so the this customer just wanted a nice level floor so he could redo the garage and turn part of it into like a weight room so the whole front of it was being redone those garage doors are coming out new doors are going in He'll, he'll have to bring his driveway up to it a little bit because we're about four inches higher in the front than the existing asphalt. So he'll have to kind of re-taper his asphalt up to the to the one new garage door he's putting in. But we do, a, we do a handful of these a year. And, you know, in a lot of cases, if you've got the, if you've got the headroom, if you've got the height, you can pour right over your existing floor. You don't have to break it out and, and redo it. And this was a really good candidate right here because it had a block wall. You know, it had that row of blocks all the way around it. So we could come right up onto those. And he was redoing his all his doors. So the, the door heights didn't really matter here. So the, this was a really good candidate for a pour over. Now there's some places in this floor that was seven inches thick. And then there was a few other places that were around three so it was plenty thick enough just to pour over the way it is there wasn't really any any prep that was needed to be done i mean it was basically just like pouring over a gravel sub base you know it we didn't have to grind it we didn't really have to clean it and scrub it don't really have to worry about the new concrete floor bonding to the old floor that's not that doesn't really matter it's basically just like pouring a new concrete floor you know over a really hard sub base <laughs> it's just a sub base that's not perfectly level that's all so if we go thinner like if we go three inches or thinner we can go down to about an inch and a half thin on something like this then I like to bond them together with a bonding agent and we use something called weld crete for that we just scrub that on with a brush before we pour and that kind of bonds the two pores together but that's only when it's really thin now if the if your floor is all cracked and heaved and settled and it's it's really really got some big cracks in it some big open cracks where it looks like the floor is settled down you know in that case that's probably a better candidate just to tear it out and redo it and fix the sub base that's underneath it because you probably got a sub base some gravel or maybe you don't even have gravel under it in that case that's not compacted um, and it needs to be redone so there's some candidates when I go to look for a floor at a floor like this I I look for something that's sound you know I it's got to be it's got to be sound we don't want to pour new concrete over something then have it settle and not too cracked up you know it's one thing if it's a hairline crack or maybe it's a shrinkage crack or a crack in a floor that because it wasn't sawed you know there's no sawed control joints in it or anything and then there's another thing when there's a crack in it because it wasn't compacted the, the gravel wasn't compacted when it was put in and it sunk two or three inches in one corner or it sunk in the middle then it's just too hard to tell if there's some hollow spots under there and it's going to keep sinking especially when you put new new weight on it so this was a good candidate for one and that's why we're doing it here and you can see you know if you've got a floor like this if you've got an older garage and you just want it level or just a room that maybe has a slope to it because it was an old garage and you're, and you're gonna refinish it and you just want a level floor over it you can definitely do that this way right here um, hopefully you don't have to pour it quite so thick but anyway you can do it and that's uh, that's the simple answer to that. It's just you got to evaluate it, evaluate what's under it, why it's out of level, if it's cracked up, why it's cracked up, and just just those things like that. But we're gonna we do a bunch of these. 
So we're, get, we're getting right to it. We got the first truck dumped out. This is actually two trucks, about seven yards a piece. Concrete's really, really hot today. It's cold today. It's below freezing right now. So, and the concrete's got hot water in it. That's why it's steaming like that, in case you're wondering. Whenever you pour really warm concrete out in the cold, it steams as it's cooling off. And it cools off pretty quick, actually, once it's poured outside. Now, we're going to... What we'll do is when we get done pouring, is we'll, we'll put them garage doors back down as far as we can without them touching the floor. And we'll, we'll poly over the two, there's two three foot doors here. And then we'll throw some heat in there, some temporary heat. And we're gonna give it a really nice power trial finish and get, put some saw cuts in it to give them a really nice brand new floor. But in the meantime, we just gotta get it poured. And this is part of the process with, with pouring in cold weather you got to deal with all that steam sometimes it makes it really hard to see so I you know as far as the driveway goes it's in a lot of cases like that I've seen like this on these older garages you know the front of the driveway needs to be redone anyway it either it kind of it's either settled or it slightly slopes toward the garage um, and it really needs part of it cut out and redone and then raised up so when this one's all done you should never get any water back in this one because now he's going to have a good slope away from the garage doors coming into the garage any rain that gets on the driveway is definitely going to slope away from this thing now you can see we got a blower hooked up back there that little blue thing that's our blower and we'll see you we got a heater up in this corner on the left hand side here we temporary heater we're gonna heat this thing right up it should heat up pretty quick and get a good finish on it if we just leave it out like this you know it's supposed to get up to around 35 today degrees fahrenheit that concrete would cool off really fast especially especially being poured on some concrete that's already pretty cold so that's going to take some of the heat out of it too. And then it would just kind of sit there. It wouldn't really dry very fast. We'd be on it for hours and hours waiting to power trial it. So the difference is getting it buttoned up, getting that air temperature up to, you know, at least 50 to 60 in there. So the temperature of the concrete doesn't get down too low. Right now, the temperature of the concrete, even though the, the water that it was mixed with is about 130 degrees. Once it gets mixed with all the sand and the aggregate and everything, it, it goes down to probably in the 70s. So that's probably 70 degree concrete right now. And then it it loses uh, 15 to 20 degrees pretty fast, probably within an hour. And you really don't want it to lose much more than that. Yeah, there's the heater back there sitting on that little platform where Darren is. we're backing in the second truck now the first truck the first truck went a little bit more than halfway because over here on the right it was a little bit thinner it's probably a five inch average right there where where Luke's standing is about seven inches of concrete and then over there to on that left wall on that block back there we're, on, we're only an inch below the top of that block so it's about six to seven inches all the way on that side it's gonna suck up quite a bit of that Crete right there you see that one crack there on the left over by that three foot door like that was the worst crack in the whole thing and the homeowner thinks that it got some frost under there and heaved that and of course when the frost comes out it goes back down but that was the worst part we're actually going to stick some rebar rods over that after we get the concrete on it we'll put some rebar over it just in case it ever does want to move again at least that rebar is going to be in the new floor to help hold it tight together there's always a slight chance when you pour over cracks on another floor that it could mirror through the new floor if it moves again. So in that case, you're going to want to have some type of reinforcement over that crack. You can see all that steam. It just at times it gets hard to even see. We're we're magging there on that post. That's a treated post too, so the concrete's not going to bother that. But we're magging to our lines around that post. Then we have a, a chalk line snapped on the blocks. So we're magging our grades to that chalk line and there's times when it's pretty hard to see when all that concrete, that hot concrete gets right there. 
We're using a water reducer too, so the water reducer will help limit the amount of water we need to get it to a really good flowable slump. So we use very little water in this mix and we can get it to flow really easily and that just helps that helps make the pour go quicker for us so we can get it in and we got the hot water and we got some accelerator in the concrete to help it set up a little quicker today so we you know our goal is to get this thing in as fast as we can before that concrete starts to set up on us I don't know how many I've done these over the years you know in the last 40 years pouring most of them we've done probably our garage floors we've done some basement floors but probably I don't know a hundred like this similar to this and never any callbacks never heard anything that's gone wrong with them just depends on you know depends on the right candidate for it if I don't think it's a good idea to pour over somebody else's floor if I think it might settle then I'll just tell them you know no nah, I don't think I don't think we should do that I think you should just rip it out get somebody to demo it get somebody in here to do some new gravel dig out the old gravel put in the new gravel recompact it and then we'll pour you a brand new floor and then you don't have to worry about it settling we're gonna get this in we're gonna finish this up you know stay tuned I've got another video with a concrete over concrete garage floor in case that's what you're looking for that'll that'll pop up at the end of this one so you can double check that one similar similar case just different type of garage and uh, thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe so you can be updated I come out with a couple videos a week we'll see you on the next one Find a place for you to wash out. Hey, Grant.